Alrighty, so we have the S10 outside for the first time in oh, a couple months anyway. Um, there's a good reason for that. It's going to be dry for the next few days. And I really need to get some stuff done on my daily driver. So I don't mind leaving it out with a car cover on it for a few dry days while we get the truck back in running order. Because unfortunately, my big blue truck with its 325,000K on it now you know, needs a bit of maintenance. So I figured I'd show you a bit of where we're at. With the truck here, what I've been working on this week. Um, so over on the far side, obviously all this stuff is now reassembled completely. And on the outside here, I've taken and I cleaned up the hardware and reassembled the wiper linkage now. So it's assembled and I lubricated everything so it won't be squeaky because on my Chev truck that I have, um, it squeaks all the time. So that kind of annoys me. Um, obviously I've ran all the wiring back, put all the clips back in. And I put the blower motor in. I still got to put the hose on here. Um, I've cleaned all these connectors up. I've ran the heater hoses, so obviously this one comes up to the rad, which we haven't installed yet. And I've taken the black sealer and just ran a bead of it around to seal up the heater box. Um, I've tested the wiper motor, and I'll show you that in a second here. So we are getting there. Well, we're still alive here. Uh, just have a lot on the go at the moment, and that's something I'll cover in another video. But I figured while I was doing things today, I'd show you what I'm up to. So I'm down here with the uh, the big blue Dodge. And we've come to retrieve something else that I own. Actually, two things I own. So on the trailer is my 1952 Dodge half-ton pickup. Which uh, is sitting on a 94 Dodge Dakota frame. So it's got rack and pinion and all the fun stuff. Independent suspension, disc brakes etc etc and sitting in it is a uh, 2000 360 Magnum out of a Durango and behind it is a 5 speed from a 2002 Dakota and then I got a set of Durango buckets sitting inside it also so that's kind of the grand scheme of it um, Converted it to the five lugs so I could put regular Mopar steel rims on it. And the truck is kind of a, well, it needs a lot of work. So I got to shorten the frame a couple inches and uh, then everything else will fit right. But it's a project. There's a TM6 woods mower. That's another project. And the trailer itself is kind of a project too. I bought it off a friend. So moving this stuff around today before you know winter hits um, and stereotypical of my luck with trailer tires I just happened to do a walk around and found this bulge in this tire so we'll see if it's gonna make it or not give it a shot I guess well typical of my luck the one with a bulge in it's fine uh, the one in front of it that looked like the better tire has thrown a belt and uh, started chucking rubber off. So that's kind of kind of typical. Oh well, we'll take the back road the rest of the way, I guess. Okay, so now that we're back at the house and we're gonna unload the truck, I'll show you something I did a while ago on my truck here to make it easier. Now I have had this trailer a couple months, but my other trailer there with my winch on it, I've owned that trailer for close to 10 years now since I built it actually. And over the years I've learned a lot about winches and dead batteries and how much of a pain it was to have an onboard battery. So rather than having an onboard battery, at one point I came up with this idea. So this is heavy gauge wire obviously. And it comes up here to an Anderson plug behind my front bumper. Now you'll notice that the area where I put it is an area where the plug doesn't get covered in crap and I also have a cover for it and I keep it sprayed with oil. That plug comes up here and it goes into a maxi fuse. 
through that maxi fuse and from there up to my battery. Um, it works quite well. One of the other things I have is I also have a set of booster cable ends so that even if I'm not using the trailer with my truck, I can hook up to a battery on a truck. So I'll show you how this trailer works. Uh, this trailer was built by Straight Line Trailers in Goring, Ontario. And uh, it's actually, it's a really well-built trailer. Don't let the fact that it's kind of rotten and needs some love fool you. So first things first, we have to release it, which I'm going to make some type of catch or something to hold that. Um, and then I'll put the winch on now. Well, while we're here, I figured I'd show you this little guy. See that little turd there? Looks like a ladybug, right? Not a ladybug. It's a Chinese beetle. They're actually an invasive species, and they bite. Yeah. Wonderful, right? Okie dokie. So this is my big 8,500-pound winch that I bought on sale a few years ago to replace my 10.5 winch I had, which was a piece of crap. Well, it wasn't a piece of crap. It started out as a good winch, and then over the years, use and abuse set in, and the clutch basically was shot in it, so the drum would just roll out when it wanted to, and it would skip and do all kinds of crap. So I bought this one on sale for $2.99, I think. And then I bought this sucker here, which gave me the ability to run a remote. And I think it was $79. Bucks. So, trust me, it was a good investment. So what I usually do is throw my cable on and I give it a shove after all the straps are off until it gets tension on the cable and then from there you get to see the magic of the tilt trailer all right no need for ramps Okay, I'll give it a shove and then you'll watch the deck come right back down. All right, so I lied and uh, I forgot how good this trailer is balanced. As soon as I pushed the truck so it wasn't touching the end of the, the deck, it dropped right back down where it's supposed to be. It really is a nice trailer. And primarily why I bought it is I figured with me starting a business doing exhaust, at some point someone's going to ask me to pick up their car to uh to bring it to the shop and do the work and uh i figured the problem with that trailer is entirely the loading angle now when i built this trailer i built it in mind of hauling mostly scrap cars full-size cars um tractors just equipment whatever i needed to do with it right i didn't think at that time about low vehicles right so i've moved a few low vehicles with this trailer but the problem is every time i have i've had to go ahead and use wood blocks and pieces of two by six and create different angles for my ramps and it's a pain and you know what it doesn't look professional so when my friend offered me this trailer you know, the wheels got turning because with it, you know, I might put a bit of weight on it here. Right? All you got to do is put a bit of weight on this the end of the trailer and you don't have a loading angle. Because the trailer, even with no weight on it, is still lower than that one. So, it's, uh, well, it's an idea anyway. We'll see how it works out. I'm going to have to do a whole lot of work to the trailer. It needs some metal work. There's a hole in the deck and stuff um, right here, which is not a big deal because in the back of the truck right now, there's actually a piece of checker plate steel to fix that. It's going to need the backs of the fenders cut out and replaced because they're a disaster. 
and I'd like to re-weld that section of the deck where it's popping up. And I'd like to fix stuff like this where it's rotted out. And it needs lights and wiring and the first thing it's got to go is a surge coupler. I absolutely hate surge couplers. All of my trailers have um, brakes on all the wheels and I use electric brakes because I have a good trailer brake controller in my truck. Um, years ago I bought one of these guys and installed it and it's a uh, Tecantra P3. And what I like about them is that you can go through and set the power on it. Like, it's not connected to the trailer, obviously, but... And it's uh, it's what they call a smart controller. So it will actually do proportional braking because it has a yaw sensor inside it, which is pretty cool. I bought it for next to nothing at an auction, actually. Someone returned it, uh, I guess, to like Amazon or something like that and said it didn't work. I, uh, I think I paid $20 for it. I brought it home, I plugged it into the truck, and it lit right up and was ready to go. So, obviously it wasn't the, uh, the controller's fault. Anyway, I'll move this truck, and, uh, well, I guess I'll uh, finish moving the 52 back where it lives. You can see some of my other equipment move for the winter. My brush hog, finish cutter, my back blade, the old tractor here. And we'll get on to doing some other stuff today. Okay, do me a favor. If you're ever going to mess with a winch cable, put on a pair of gloves. Because you catch one little burr on this cable anywhere. While you're feeding that cable back in, you will open your hands up like a surgeon. So, a pair of gloves goes a long way. Well, here's how the trip turned out, eh? So, <laughs> you'll notice this tire is a wee bit egg-shaped and there's a big section of rubber not here. So, somehow I didn't have that on my, my cards as that one being the one to go. Yet, the one with a giant turtle growing out of the side of it seems to be fine now. So that figures. Like I mentioned before, this trailer is not the nicest. Like, it needs some frame repair. Looks like somebody's tried to patch it and stuff. And it needs suspension and it needs brakes. The one thing I don't like is that it only has brakes on the front axle. It just has idlers on the back. As you can see by the fact there's no drum back here. So what I have is four brand new brake assemblies to go on it. Front and rear. And uh, I'll get a pair of used drums from the wreckers off another trailer. And I'll do the same as I've done for my other trailers. I'll throw them on the lathe in the shop here. And machine them so they're nice and clean and ready to go again and uh, we'll wire it up I'll probably have to get a set of suspension hangers because as you can see they've worn out to the point where they've actually uh, worn through the hangers now I can't remember if it's this side or the other one no somebody's welded this one on the other side it's very visible to see and it's pretty common like when I used to work on trailers I used to see it all the time there you can kind of see it see the empty space here that's because the equalizer is worn. If I was to put a jack underneath this bolt here, I could lift that up and down. So, what I'm going to end up doing is... Oh look, that axle plate's rotted through too. Okay, so we're going to get U-bolt kits. Probably new leaf springs. I'll probably just put a whole new suspension in it, to be honest with you. I'll put four new tires on it and a spare. It'll get new bearings. Like I said, used drums. New brake assemblies, I'll rewire it front to back, and we'll weld anything that's questionable. I'll cut it out and I'll put complete lengths of tube in. Because that's the way to do it right. And then either I'll have a really reliable trailer for years to come, or someone else will. Alright, one of today's jobs. So you can see this is the exhaust off my loader tractor. And the reason why we're changing it, it doesn't leak. There's nothing like that wrong with it. But it is a gigantic pain in my butt. And every time I put my foot on the brake, you see all this black on top of here? That's my boots melting. So that and the fact of getting a face full of 
full of burnt oil and other excrement. Every time I go to put anything on the back of the tractor, I decided that I would go ahead and put a stack on it, which I, of course, bent up with my bender. So let's get it on here before we run out of light today. So that's what we have. That's what I bent. And then I bought a new muffler because, well, that one's longer and it's just not in pretty shape at all, so screw it. Now, they had it on the shelf for $144, basically $150. Um, I got it for 50% off that, and other than $5 worth of exhaust clamps, that was the only expense I had because I already had the pipe. So, I don't mind spending 75 bucks, I guess, to have uh, an upright exhaust. All right, with it sitting in place here, you kind of get an idea. It actually, it, it fits a lot better than I thought it would considering I made this not here <laughs> and without the tractor anywhere near. Like, there's lots of clearance around the pipe all the way around. So I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm going to tighten that clamp up there, which I had to find another bolt that would fit because, God forbid, I have anything that fits here. So I'll get that tightened up here. All right, so we're all mounted up here. That's going to have to get trimmed at some point. These guys are okay. I'll probably nip them down a little bit, though, just for sake of clearance. Um, it does clear nice, though, eh? Like, it fits pretty good. I know that looks like a butchery thing. It's because I didn't have a proper clamp, but I wanted something to hold it so it's solid, which it is. Um, now, I know it looks like the stack is way tall. That's on purpose. So what I did was, with me sitting in the seat, I wanted it above my head, which it is. And I'm five foot ten, so it it works. So let's see how it how it works, I guess. So we'll just go ahead and hang on here. All right, let me put this camera somewhere Ugh. so I have some fingers. There we go. I'll point it right there. <laughs> 